A young bull in Magnusor strides across the open savannas. He has survived the harsh dry seasons, and now the rains will soon arrive. He looks forward to days on just munching on nothing but green goods for days on end. Though many times he has barely been able to keep himself up during the dry months, he's been able to scrap by, and now he is almost ready for the mating season. However, that day may not come to pass, as he feels a shift in the air. He is being watched, and from out of the underbrush, a large pack of living dagger-toothed creatures come popping out. He knows all too well that these are killers specialized in hunting him, and his kind. He has witnessed these creatures kill an elderly bull of his species before in his younger years, and if he is not careful, these creatures could very much turn him into a meal as well. The two parties let out bellows and hisses at each other, trying to intimidate before things turn ugly. He readies himself for a fight of his life, and perhaps even one of the most epic and majestic fights in all of Cryptadia. The fight of titans, a battle of gods and slayers, the Carcaradon of Venetrix, the Huntress Queen of the Savannas of Cryptadia. Cochradon of Venetrix are large ceratosaurine theropod dinosaurs. Typically, females are larger than males, females are at an average 3.7 to 4.4 tons, and males, on average, are 3.5 to 3.7 tons. However, in packs with more than two females, the most dominant females tend to get a large growth spurt and reaching up to a massive 5.3 tons, resulting in her becoming the matriarch of the group, with one or more subordinate females and one or more lesser males. Cochradon of Venetrix adult Adults are only really found in the savannas and scrublands of the island, as they prefer the hotter and more arid environment over the other biomes of the island, and are always hunting in the day and sleeping at night, though younger individuals of the species may take up a more nocturnal niche in order to avoid getting seen by larger members of their own species to minimize getting eaten by them. Cacaradona Venetrix are mobbing and ambushing carnivores, meaning these animals will come together to form large groups in order to take down large game, such as herds of Tupahadros, Lone Spearschutz, and the occasional Antikotherium, and of course, the most well-known hunts of them all. Majestic and epic battles between Insula Magnosaurs and the largest mobs of Cacaradona Venetrix are a sight to behold. Cacaradona Venetrix tend to hide and stay still in the large and tall grasses, ferns, and bushes of the savannas, lying in wait until something comes in range of their scent or a nearby mob member engages in an open display with something. Usually both ways will end the same, all nearby Cacaradona Venetrix coming to the one spot to take down their selected prey, though don't be mistaken by this as they are not coordinated pack hunters, but instead mobbing animals that take advantage of the situation. Usually by the end of the hunt, their prey is dead with some moderately injured mob members cleaning themselves and rolling in mud to help them with their injuries. Sometimes, however, there may be dead members for the others to eat and for the scavengers to feed off of. This is no surprise though, as the prey are dangerous and massive in comparison to them with the lightest prey animal they could hunt being Spirschust, which weighs equally as their largest females. Cocoradonna Venetrix have a hierarchy of sorts, with adult females being at the very top and adult males at the very bottom, with the young staying in the middle. Males are typically at the lowest in the hierarchy, with even the young individuals and hatchlings ranking higher than them and getting to eat with the females first. Any males who attempt to eat before the females will get severely punished and sometimes outright killed by the dominant female. However, there have been recorded cases of just mated pair Cochradona Venetrix being far less aggressive with each other and even eating together at the same time. This is likely due to there being a lack of overall need for competition for food as a pair of mouths requires a far less need to feed than three or five. However, there has also been rare cases of males that were able to reach larger sizes, roughly around 4.7 tons, and directly compete and even at times outwit and outstrength the females of the group, making him an alpha male of sorts, only below the monarch. Typically in the, found in at least adult pairs or at most large groups of five adult members, though subadults and adolescent can form larger groups as they require far less food, but these larger groups are temporary, Packs of these monarchs will actively patrol their territories for any rival mobs or other apex predators that threaten to take their turf. If adult groups were to stumble across a group of these bachelors, of young adolescents and subadults, chances are those that are unlucky enough will be eaten by the adults. 
Pachyrodon and Venetrix babies are arguably some of the dumbest looking animals on Cryptadia. They're not capable of any form of hunting in their early weeks, but once they reach one year of age, they have a limited time span to learn the ropes of how to be a hunter, as within just five years, their parents will slowly stop seeing them as their children and instead see them as potential food. So within these six years, young members of the species quickly need to learn to hunt on their own, and at times, some will leave the mob at only four years of age. At this size, they are capable of of hunting small game, but are nowhere near the top of the food chain, as they themselves can easily fall prey to the many vassal predators of the savannas. Most well-known killer of these young princes are the Asdalra, one-ton noasaurs that are known for their insane stamina, hence the name Asdalra, which means endurance or stamina in German, I'm most likely butchering this name by the way. These predators will kill any young prince with a swipe of their claws while locking them in place with their teeth. But those that are lucky to not be preyed upon by these creatures, or other vassal predators for that matter, once the young Cochradona Venetrix are able to read 8 years of age, they are safe from most other carnivores, save for a few exceptions, with only older and larger Cochradona Venetrix and other large carnivore species providing any real threat to them. When making the Cochradona Venetrix, I was originally going to make them Allosauroids or Cochradonosaurus, but I went with Ceratosaurus instead, as I personally found them more interesting and, well, overall more fun to mess around with in Spec Evo. And, well, no, here we are today. And even in the name of the creature, the Cochradona Venetrix, was actually meant to throw people off, making them think it's a Cochradontosaur or maybe even an Allosaur. But in actuality, it's actually a Ceratosaur. Uh, yeah, it's just a very me thing. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video because, well, fucking, you know. This was fun. Fun as hell to draw, especially all this uh, ecology art that y'all saw in the video. And I was finally able to fucking show the uh, Antiquitherium, which I've been wanting to for a while. But, yeah. The video's here. I hope you all enjoyed. It's not as long as I hope to be because my fucking writing skills aren't that good yet, but hopefully they're enough for you guys. And uh, we also recently reached 1,000 subs yesterday, so expect to see a 1,000 sub video uh, soon. Anyways, this is the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing and sharing my project to, well, anywhere else, really. I don't really mind because I would love for the support to happen. Anyways, I've taken up enough of your guys' time. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.